Hello and welcome to week one, part two of EGM 703, More Principles of Thermal Remote Sensing. In this lesson, we'll spend some more time refreshing how electromagnetic radiation interacts with the Earth's surface. I apologize in advance for the wall of text on this page, but before we keep going, I think it's important to set out some definitions for the ways that objects interact with electromagnetic radiation. I'm not going to read through each of these, but they're here to serve as a reference for you. I will, however, highlight one definition, spectral radiance. This is the one we're going to spend the most time covering this week. Similar to what we discussed for the atmosphere, electromagnetic radiation interacts with the Earth's surface by either being reflected, absorbed, or transmitted. How it interacts with the surface depends on the properties of the surface, the wavelength of the re electromagnetic radiation, and the angle of illumination or incidence. It's important to note that these are not mutually exclusive things. An object can transmit some incident radiation, absorb some, and reflect the rest, or it can completely absorb or completely reflect the incident radiation. In any case, the incident radiant flux known as phi sub i, is the sum of the radiant flux that is reflected, absorbed, and transmitted. Taking the equation from the previous slide, we can normalize or divide this by the incident radiant flux phi sub i. We can then define the following. The absorptance, alpha, here the lambda in parentheses denotes that this varies with wavelength. It's a function of wavelength. This is the ratio of the radiant flux that is absorbed to the incident radiant flux. The reflectance, rho of lambda, is the ratio of the radiant flux that is reflected to the incident radiant flux. This, of course, should be very familiar to you by now because we've used it in a number of the previous modules. Finally, the transmittance, tau of lambda, is the ratio of the radiant flux that is transmitted through the material or the surface or the object to the incident radiant flux. So if we put all of this together, then the absorptance, reflectance, and transmittance of a surface or an object or a material should all sum to one. Kirchhoff's radiation law states that for an arbitrary body emitting and absorbing in thermodynamic equilibrium, the emittance, epsilon, of the object is equal to its absorptance. By thermodynamic equilibrium, what we mean is that there is no net flow of energy between the object and its environment. This assumption generally holds for most large objects, meaning objects larger than molecules, for at least most of the time. In addition to this, we also know that most objects are opaque in the thermal infrared. That is, the transmittance of the object, or the surface, is equal to zero. And so the equation from the previous slide becomes this. The emittance plus the reflectance is equal to one. In other words, objects that have a low reflectance have a high emissivity, kind of like an idealized black body. And of course, conversely, objects with a low emittance have a high reflectance. As we've mentioned, most objects only emit a fraction of what an idealized black body does. As we've seen, the, emit, the emissivity of an object, or the emittance of an object, I think I said, is the ratio of the object's radiance to the radiance emitted by a black body at the same temperature. We normally refer to the spectral emissivity and the spectral radiance, meaning that these are measured for a particular wavelength or wavelength band. Planck's radiation law, which is the equation shown here, gives us the spectral radiance for a black body of a given temperature, T. So we can write the spectral radiance for a non-ideal object like this. It's just the black body radiation, or the black body radiance, multiplied by the emissivity. We'll come back to this a bit more when we talk about how we actually calculate temperature using the radiance. So because we live in a non-ideal world, we have different ways of describing how objects differ from ideal black bodies. The first one, a gray body, 
is an object that has an approximately constant emissivity, which is to say its emissivity does not depend on wavelength. In the figure here, this is show, shown by the dash dot line at about 0 0.5. Next, a selective radiator, shown in the figure as this solid black line, is an object whose emissivity does vary, sometimes significantly, with wavelength. Oftentimes, objects or surfaces can behave like black bodies over very narrow bandwidths or wavelength ranges. As an example, clear water has a very high emissivity in thermal infrared, meaning that its emissivity in this wavelength region is very nearly equal to 1. In addition to wavelength, emissivity can also vary with the temperature of the object or the surface, different surface conditions like moisture content, for example wet soil has a very different emissivity than dry soil does, as well as the viewing angle. This is often a very useful thing. For example, we can use this to help differentiate or distinguish objects or materials, especially if we have a sensor that has multiple channels in the thermal infrared. For the most part, sensors are measuring radiance. To be slightly more precise, they're measuring the spectral radiance of whatever is, uh, whatever surface we're observing. If we know the incident radiation on an object or surface, then we can figure out what proportion of that radiation is reflected, absorbed, or transmitted by the object. In the thermal infrared, Emissivity, which is approximately equal to the absorption of an object or a surface, is the most important of these properties. Emissivity often varies with wavelength or surface properties, which is something that we can use to help identify or study different surfaces or materials. You can read more about the topics that we've discussed here in the two textbooks, Lewis and Kiefer and Chipman, chapters 1.4 and 4.9, or Campbell and Wynn chapters 2 and 9.6. I've also included some links to a number of different papers that go into more depth about emissivity, such as how we can measure emissivity using different sensors, different emissivity mapping missions on both Earth and Mars. Finally, there are some links to a couple of spectral libraries where you can actually get measured emittance values for different surfaces and materials. That's all I have for this lesson. I hope you found it interesting, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me or post in the discussion forum on Blackboard. Bye!